And viewers, I'm back again and uh, you know, I just want to start putting these videos online because um, the devil seems to be taking over internet. And uh, you guys know what I mean. It's taking over internet and uh, uh, I'll, I'll advise all Christians to arise and fight this battle. We cannot be hiding under camera. I see what people do on Facebook. They just take a camera, they put like this, you know, admiring themselves and so on and so forth. Then everybody does it, everybody likes it. How do I look? And the people go, oh, you look beautiful and so on and so forth. But trust me, I don't know if you have been to um, autopsy. We are doctors perform autopsy. When you see what they do to human body, all in the, in the name of investigating, you will not believe that that person that is being butchered like that used to be a very beautiful woman, a very beautiful girl, or a very handsome man. This body will rot. You know, I like to really say it like this. Most people may not like it, but trust me, I don't want to present God's word with apology or reservation. I'm go the truth hurts. And in the court, remember before you go to court, there's always what they say, um, as you lift up your right hand and uh, promise that you're going to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. The moment that Bible is closed, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is lies. Let me pray and go. I just want to have that in your head before we continue. Lord, today is the day the Lord has made. And God wants us to enjoy and relax and rejoice in it. Yeah, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing I expect you to do is, Lord, thank God. I'm alive and well this morning. Bless today for me. So Lord, as we are watching, which means they are alive, they have survived another day. And I pray, Lord, that today, order their footsteps. Protect them, sustain them, provide for them. Speak to them, Lord. Speak to their hearts. Encourage them. Give them a pat on the back and let them know that it is well with their soul. And as your word comes forth this time, oh Lord God, send us direction, send us illumination, send us correction, send us salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Send us redemption too, Lord. In complicated system, oh Lord God, make it easy for us. Send us answers to our questions. And send us your Holy Spirit and your angels and blessings. And as this word comes forth, O oh Lord God, anoint my tongue and ordain the words so that they will bless a lot of people. And at the end, you alone will take the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is me again, and I want to identify this station uh, New Wine Gospel Ministry, television, both on the internet, worldwide. And um, I am Pastor Emmanuel Ijan. I, I, I like to use this media to reach people that God has been trying to reach. I like to encourage those to who keep saying, what shall I do for God? I don't know. What, what will I do for God? Well, I don't know. Start by using that phone that you show on the internet, on Facebook. Start by using it. Say a word. If you don't know what to say, you can read a scripture. Open the Bible and put the camera in your face and say some scripture. And then put it on Facebook. Believe it or not, even if it's one person that gave their life to Christ, it's a big deal. When you get to heaven, your reward will blow your mind. Because the Bible said that when one soul is rescued, or when one soul is saved on earth, there is a lot of celebration going on in heaven. Remember the prodigal son when he came back to his father? After he has gone and spent all his money on drugs and women and everything, he came to his senses. And when he went back home, 
there was celebration. So when you win one soul, there is a lot of celebration and it counts for you. It will count for you. So you pay a lot of money with that um, cell phone that you have. You pay monthly. Why don't you just use it and do something? It's a tool in your hand. It's a weapon. You know, people who use weapons like guns and bows and arrows and knives and so on and so forth. Those weapons kill only the, 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 the flesh. But it does not kill the spirit. But the word of God cuts through both spiritual, natural, supernatural, bone, everything you can think about. So once you use your cell phone and rec- record something that will encourage people, that will win souls, you are using that cell phone as a weapon. And when the Bible says with one, you can chase a thousand. And when two people use it, you, you, you chase 10,000. You don't know how long those things you put on the internet will last. And the longer they stay, the more they win souls. The longer they stay, the more they, they do exploits for the kingdom. The longer they stay, the more they destroy the, the, the forces of darkness. The longer they stay, the more they terminate the resources of the enemy. The longer they stay, the more the devil hates himself. So I advise all of you that have uh, on, on Facebook that have this, this, this cell phone in your hand, use it as a weapon. That devil that has been tormenting you, that devil that has been asking you to take, take your life because you think you have no hope, that devil that has come in to steal, to kill, to destroy, use that weapon in your hand and apply the word of God to it and put it on the internet. And that will send the devil where he belongs. You have nothing to lose. That's what I keep telling people. You have absolutely nothing to lose. But everything to gain. The more technology is just growing, there's so much explosion of knowledge these days. Harness it and use it to do exploits for the kingdom. Use it, enhance it, and use it to, to, to bring devastation to the kingdom of hell. You think the devil loves you? Maybe because he gives you all these things you are asking for. Those things are not going to last. There are some fools who thought you said the devil was helping them when you were on earth and the, the devil promised them a kingdom when they die and so on and so forth. They don't even know that the devil, <laughs> the devil is in hell. The demons are all frustrated. They are all bitter. Everything you can think about, wickedness, that's the source of wickedness. Bitterness is from the devil. Division is from the devil. Terrorism is from the devil. Stealing is from the devil. Uh, 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 divorce is from the devil. A uh, uh, crackhead is from the devil. Anything that is bad is from the devil. And that's the kingdom people want to get from the devil when they go, when they die. Rise up. Think. Time, there's time. I'm going to talk about speaking to yourself. It's good to ask yourself questions. You know? Today, I, I just want to just discuss something about there are some people who say they are tired. The people are complaining that they are really tired. They are tired of frustration. They are tired of being talked about. They are tired of of pain. They they, they are tired of this world. I came across about six or seven people on Facebook because I pray on Facebook for so many people. And about between three and seven people almost committed suicide because they said they are giving up their hope. So, but God led me to them and I was able to pray with them and encourage them and they are alive today. People say that they are tired. And I have a message for you, for some people who say they are tired, that God keeps his hand, with fingers crossed and everything is happening. That they can't take it anymore. Trust me, if your parents were tired of putting two nickels together to raise you up, and took their life, you wouldn't be here today. The Bible said those that wait on the Lord, God wants you to wait, said those that wait on the Lord shall mount up wings like eagles. They will mount up, they will they will grow and never grow weary, they will run and never grow weary. They will renew their strength. They will walk and not get tired. Continue to wait on the Lord, just at the nick of time. Any time you, you, you begin to lose hope like that, begin to call Jesus. He is the hope of the hopeless. 
We were saved by hope. And what it means is that if Jesus Christ didn't come to tell us there's another place after death, then we are of all men most miserable. We will be so miserable. Do you know what it means? If there was no place like heaven and all this wicked thing is happening, there wouldn't be any need to be nice. We just everybody just be wicked, and if you survive it, it's okay. But God wants me to tell you that there is hope. There is hope. And then you can see there's some, something sad that happens in Hollywood. In Hollywood, they have all this money, all these women, all this uh, drink, all these uh, homes, all these vehicles, all this wealth. You know, and yet they take their life. When I heard about Robin Williams, it really touched me because the comedian, all of a sudden, he lost hope. So God wants me to let you know you don't have to lose hope. As long as you can say, Jesus, you have hope. You are still alive. You are breathing. You are walking, talking. There is hope. Don't throw in the towel. Call in the name of Jesus. He's the hope of the hopeless. God said he went into covenant relationship with us so that we might have hope. Always hope for something better in the future. There is a book in the Bible that said 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. The three abiders, faith, hope, and charity. Hope is an anchor for your soul. And I'm, let me take this opportunity and talk to, to senior citizens who have retired and they feel that they have seen it all. They have done everything that life has to offer. So what next? Because the moment you say what next, you terminate your future. They give up their hope and they die. No. God said, even if you are the senior citizen, even if you have retired, begin to think of something I haven't done before. I haven't seen this thing before. I haven't done so, 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 and so before. Go on a cruise. Go on a ride. Go on the, in the park. Go, have fun. And you see, your life begin to, to, to grow. You begin to grow younger. As you think younger, you, you, you become younger. You have more, more energy, and so on and so forth. God said, don't give up your hope. That's what the devil wants you to do. The devil will frustrate you and frustrate you and let you believe that, oh, is that what all the uh, world is all about? No, I'm telling you right now. Have hope in God. God lives in eternity. What kind of God do you think he is? To just create this world like this and everybody will come and suffer and die? And just like that? No. God is so much, there's so much love of God that you can't even put your finger on it. And let me remind you, some of you that have gone through difficult times, and today you are strong because of those difficult times. Anything that did not kill you will make you stronger, will make you tougher, and will make you more resilient. And it will, it will prepare you for tough times ahead. People who haven't gone through anything, who haven't suffered anything, you can't articulate with them, you can't reason with them. They are easily offended. They can't stay hard. People who haven't gone through anything, ask them to do over time at the job. Oh my God, they have a hundred reasons not to do it. So that's why if you have a company or, or, or a business and you want to hire people, look for people who have gone through difficult times. They will endure with you because they have been, they have been cooked in fire, because they have been tested in affliction, because they have been challenged in the vicissitudes of this life. So do not give up your hope. Even there was a time Jesus Christ came to the Garden of Gethsemane. He came to that point. He said, Lord, God, do I really have to go through this? His heart was so heavy. And the Bible said that sweat was falling from his face. And it's as thick as blood as it was hitting the ground. But at the time, he said, nevertheless, Lord, let your will be done. Always remember that statement. He said, Lord, I don't understand what's going on. I don't know why I'm going through this, but let your will be done. You will see God show up. He's not meant to kill you. It meant, it meant, it's meant to prepare you for battle. Look at people, soldiers, before they go to war front. You see what they go through? The kind of training that they go through? All obstacles that you can imagine. Booby traps, snakes, scorpions, mods, rivers, trees. You know, having encounter with animals in the jungle, just making sure that they survive. So that when they go to, 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 to the front, they know they have passed the test. So do not throw in the towel. Do not give up hope. And they stop saying that you hate your life. Please. 
There are some people who are begging God to be where you are right now. There are some people who said, Lord, I can't take it anymore. There are some people who are begging. Let me tell you something. I know some women who, 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 who kept on complaining. Oh, I don't know. I can't manage this anymore. This marriage thing is too tough. And some other women are praying. Oh, are praying so that you leave your husband and they come and take your husband. There was one uh, uh, um, a clip, video clip I saw somewhere in Africa. I think it's in Uganda. This man said he was fed up. He was tired of his wife. The wife nags and so on and so forth. He was taking the wife's stuff and throwing it outside in the, in, the, in the compound. And the wife was begging, no, no, you can't do this. And as the man was throwing out the, the luggage of the wife outside, some other man who was eyeing the wife said, God, thank you. This wife is coming out. As the husband was throwing out his load, her load, that other man was coming to take her load into his own house. So at the time, the man was saying, what happened to the notes I put here? Say, well, that man, he likes your wife and he's been eyeing, and you are throwing the wife away. So some of the things you said, you can't take it anymore. I can't stand this person. Some other person is praying to God for you to trash that person and they come and thank God for that kind of thing. So that's one thing I wanted to realize. You can't, you can't just say, I give up hope. Think about your parents for a minute. Some of you that your parents were not born with a silver spoon. Like in, in Africa, some parents were farmers, mega farmers, suffering. Some were pan wine tappers. They have to wake up early in the morning. Some have to use a bicycle as a transport to travel miles and miles to transport somebody for a mega amount of money. And they endured it and put this money together to train you that is complaining right now. If they said they were tired, if they, if they put up, if they said they were hopeless and didn't do anything, and they didn't train you. Your situation would have been worse. So I, I, I appeal to you. Jesus is there. Jesus said when you are weak, he is strong on your behalf. He is there to lift you up. He said, burden bearer. Jesus Christ said, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke. Just take my yoke upon you. And learn from me. Just because I say, learn from him. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Light. Say, learn from me. I went through these difficult times. When they were whipping Jesus Christ from, from uh, Pilate to Herod, from Herod to Pilate and back and forth, to calling him names and so on, blasphemer. They, 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 they betrayed him. They, they, they uh, 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 denied him. They scorched him. They snipped him. They, they called him uh, uh, all sorts of names. You know, the Bible was so polite that they didn't say so many cuss words that came out of people's minds. And the Bible said that Jesus Christ was a man of sorrow and he had no choice but to acquaint himself with grief. During that period, he did not say he was tired. During that period, he said, I can't take this anymore. He endured the agony. He endured the shame because he was thinking about you and I as he was hung on that cross. He saw beyond the cross and said, and for this reason, he developed passion. Do you know what it means for you to develop passion to be crucified? When Jesus Christ saw us on the other side, say, if I really die for these people and so on, we're going to be with him in eternity. Then he laid his life down. The Bible said nobody took his life. He laid it down. He laid his life down. He went to the cross as a lamb. Jesus Christ did not say, I'm tired. Jesus Christ did not say, I'm, I'm hopeless. Jesus Christ did not say, I'm not going to go through with this. Jesus Christ did not say, you know what, forget you people. The more I continue to, 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 to fight for you, the more I continue to give my life for you, the more you continue to sin. Jesus Christ did not give up on you. Why would you give up on yourself? Don't say you are tired. I will advise you to say you are fired up. I'm ready to fight again. You get up, clear yourself up, and move every step. You say, I move in the name of Jesus Christ. I overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I persevere in the name of Jesus Christ. I push forward in the name of Jesus Christ. I continue to, 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 to have breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Christ. I am more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus Christ. I am going to break yokes in the name of Jesus. Any step you take, even no matter how painful it is, we have to accomplish it in the name of Jesus Christ. If God has not given up on you, why are you giving up on yourself? I dare you to think again. I dare you to get up from that bed of distress and of despair 
and I dare you to get up and clean up yourself and continue to move. It's a race. It's war. Continue to fight. Continue to believe God. Continue to pray. Continue to have confidence in Him. Continue to trust Him. Continue to exalt Him. Continue to glorify Him. Continue to magnify Him. Continue to listen to Him. Continue to, to, to offer praise and worship to Him. Continue to brag about Him. Continue to tell people about Him. You will see when you begin to do this, there's a strength that comes from within. He is a, a water. A, 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 the Bible said, he is the river of living water. When you are hopeless and you call in the name of Jesus, that water will spring up from within you and you start begin to bubble with joy. And the joy of the Lord is the source of your strength. Don't you ever say you are giving up. Do you know, you, have you forgotten who you are in Christ? Have you forgotten that God made you in his image and likeness? Not the angels. The angels were not made in his image and likeness. God made you in the image and likeness. And he gave you power. Authority, dominion, majesty over the creation of his hands. He gave you an option to even think for yourself. He gave you a willpower. The, 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 the creatures in heaven don't have the willpower to do as they please. The devil tried it and he, he, he God kicked him out of heaven. And his, and, 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 his, and, and his demons. Oh, they're going to get it. And they know that they're going to get it. It's just a matter of time. They know they're going to get it. God created hell for, 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 for devil and, 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 his, and his demons. It's not for us human beings. Even though some people find themselves in that place. It's not for us human beings. He created hell for them. And one, let me tell you a secret about that hell. Hell is not, trapped. It's not a, a, an accommodation that is limited. And that where they say, people, okay, now go to hell. They say, no more, we have no more room. No, hell is still growing. It's still growing. The intensity of the judgment is still growing. You know, the judgment of God is still more powerful. It's still increasing. So please don't give up hope. What you are going through here right now that makes you want to say you want to give up hope? You want to compare it to what is going to happen in hell? And some people just complain because somebody, somebody called me names or they broke my heart and so on and so forth. Hey, Jesus Christ is there. Pick up your Psalm 51 and read. You come to him out with a broken spirit. He's going to fix you. Jesus Christ is a fixer up. He's going to fix you up. Turn things around for you and send, send you on your way. Don't give up hope. And stop telling everybody that you lose hope and so on and so forth. When you are down, I know you can be down and depressed. But let it be for a moment. And when somebody encourages you or, or comes to console you because you lost somebody, don't continue to play games. If you continue, the devil will be taking your mind further and further and further away from where God wants you to be. Don't let the devil dictate your life for you. You are wonderfully and fearfully made by God. You are unique in yourself. You are peculiar. A precox lumber that God has created. There was a day God decided to say, hmm, let me create you. It's something special. The day God created you with your consciousness, with your body, he decided the agenda, everything about you. Life. Wow. We, 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 we design cars and airplanes and so on, and they end up in junkyard. And that's the story of those things. That the things we crave for. And some people say, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have this, and so on. If you have Mercedes Benz, one day that same Mercedes will end up in junkyard. It doesn't go to heaven. Your house, the same thing, if you fall down, every place you find a home, when you dig properly, you see that there were natives in the past that have lived there before. Nothing on earth lasts, but you, that is so special, the apple of God's eye, you will live forever with him. As long as you're giving your life to Christ. Please don't say the pain is too much. Don't be tired. Be fired up. Don't retire. Be fired up. Don't raise the white flag. We don't surrender. You're a child of God. The enemy is supposed to surrender. Don't throw in the towel. Don't call it quit. You are not a quitter. You are a champion. God said we are, we are not the tail. We are the head. So you cannot be acting as the tail when God says you are the head. You cannot act as a quitter when God said that you are a champion. You are a winner. 
You cannot be acting it as a victim. When God says you are a victor, you are victorious. Stop putting everything in reverse. Because through you, there's nothing good. The Bible said that uh, um, you can do all things. All things through Christ who will strengthen. You know, when you strengthen something, that's what you need. At times, you, you are doing something and you need more strength to be able to do it. God will strengthen you. Give you that strength to be able to overcome. Give you that strength you know, to be able to move on. No. And he's ordering your footsteps. You're not doing it alone. If God be for you, who can be against you? You're not doing it alone. You are doing it with God. God is doing it with you. You are a partner with God. In John 15, 15, God says, Henceforth, I call you no more servants, but friend. So that's, 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 that's a, a, a graduation there. That's, that's, that's an, an improvement. That's a promotion. And at the time, it's okay. From now on, you are my children. You know? So I'm going to leave with this song. Unshakable must be shaken. Unbreakable must be broken. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. All prisoners must be free. All sicknesses must be healed. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. It doesn't matter where they have taken your name. It doesn't matter where they have taken your photo. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every power succumb. If they touch you, they touch fire. If they see you, they see fire. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every power succumb. So he said that the unshakable, those things that you think that cannot be shaken out of your life. It must be shaken at the name of Jesus Christ. Every chain, every, every bondage that you think that's not going to be broken, he said it must be broken at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ. Every spell that's been hovering around your head by your enemy that you think that cannot be broken, God says at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, that spell has to be broken. And, it, you know, and also he says that strongholds of the enemy that has been with, uh, all over you and so on, at the, name of, at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, those strongholds will be pulled down in the name of Jesus Jesus. And also, it is saying that that song is saying that some people are so wicked, they take your name to voodoo doctors. He said, it doesn't matter where they have taken your name to. At the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, those people will regret taking your name to a voodoo doctor. And I'm saying right now too, I said that it doesn't matter where they are taking your photo to, your picture to, because they take your pictures to just wicked, wicked people and so on. It doesn't matter where they took it. If you mention the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ will appear in front of your picture. It doesn't matter where they have called your name, invoke your name on a mirror. As you mention the name of Jesus Christ, lightning and thunder we strike everything and disintegrate and terminate all the plans, all the weapons of the enemy. And they say, well, because our father is a consuming fire. He said, if they touch you, they are playing with fire. They will touch, they will be born. If they see you, they will see fire at the, at the mention of the name Jesus Christ. So you have nothing to lose. Stop walking with your head down. Walk upright with integrity, honor, and dignity. You are a child of the king. You are a child of the king of kings. God is the author and finisher of this whole earth. Everything that you see that you can touch, God created it. He that sits above the circle of the earth and spins things in orbit. Every of those planets that you see spinning and the day and night come back and forth and so on. And yeah, He did it. He's controlling it. He spoke it into existence. He spoke you into existence. And as he speaks to you, and what about the word of God? Once he speaks you into existence, the word not only creates you or creates something. The word protects you. The word pre preserves you. The word upholds you. The word sustains you. So the word of God that is there, that's spoken in your life, will always stick. It never goes back to him void. So I say to you right now, you are a child of the Most High. Do you know what it means to be a child of the Most High God? You are dangerous if the devil is thinking... Don't you know that's why the devil is after you like crazy? Because there's nothing the devil can do to, to, to God. If, uh, if your enemy looks for your parents, they can't get your parents. They want, to, they want to go after your children. That's why the devil can't stand us. He hates us because our father is the God of all creation. Always have a good relationship with your father in heaven. Always invite Jesus Christ to take you out to dinner. Try it. 
There are some people who had the dinner with somebody they didn't, that they didn't know. They didn't even realize before they know it, it was Jesus Christ. He has come and he's gone. Ask Jesus Christ to take you out for a walk. Ask him to take you to heaven once in a while and show you what heaven is like. He does it. I see so many people who have been going to heaven back and forth. Ask him. Be serious about it. He will take you on a visit. He will show you your mansion in heaven. It's not until you die. He can do it right now. To prove to you that he's a man. He's not a respecter of persons. And let me tell you something that I love so much about God. You cannot take God to court. Oh yeah, you can't. God is not commanded by the order of men. You can't take him to court. You can't do anything to him. You can't kill him. You can't, you can't dethrone him. You can't vote him into office. You can't vote him out. Nothing, there's nothing anybody can do to him. We are nothing but his creation. The way God looks at us, like, like you know, microscopic. But this is our Father in heaven. You have no reason to be downcasted. You have no reason to be depressed. You have no reason to be sorrowful. You have no reason to walk with your head down. You have no reason to, to, to be hopeless. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He came so that you might have life and have it abundantly. He came to destroy the plan of the devil. He came to encourage you to hang on there. And he is coming again for us. If you haven't given your life to Christ, this is the time. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, who came to die for you and for me. Give your life to him. Today, say, Lord, I'm giving my life to you, whole and entire. Don't hold anything back. Don't put one hand in the back and put the other hand in the front. I'm giving you this. No, just surrender to him. I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender. I surrender all. All to you, Lord. Blessed Savior, I surrender all. Just surrender all to him. Your mind, your spirit, your heart, your being, your mornings, your days, your future, your middle age, your old age, your youth, your tomorrows, your dispensations, your generation. Surrender everything to him, your career, your bank account, everything that's connected to your loins. Surrender it to him, your voice, surrender it to him, you know, everything to him. And thank him for coming to die and say, I accept that gift that God has given to me. Say, Jesus, I accept you as the gift of God. Yes, it's our reward. My rewarder, my rewarder is coming. It's our reward. Accept it. And give your life to him. And believe in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind, in your guts. That he came and he died for you and on the third day that God raised him up from dead and he's alive today and since he made it and he's alive what makes you think that we can't make it and we are alive remain blessed remain humble remain hopeful your miracle is on its way maybe, maybe by, the time, by the time I finish praying for you your miracle will be knocking on your door Signs and wonders will be knocking on your door. Hope that you have lost will be knocking on your door. Blessings will be knocking on your door. And as they are knocking, devastation is fleeing. Misfortune is fleeing. Catastrophe is fleeing. The demons are fleeing. The darkness in your home is fleeing. Poverty is fleeing. Sickness is fleeing. As long as God is coming in and establishing his kingdom in you, Establishing everything, his will, his uh, instruction in your home. Establishing his constitution, God's constitution in your home. Nothing else can stand. Light and darkness cannot share the same room. So welcome God into your heart, into your home, into your marriage, into your family, in your beginnings, in your middles, and in your end. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of everything. So open up your spirit as I pray. Spirit of God, I commit this one into your hands, Lord, as they are all listening and tuning in, oh Lord Jesus. Let their life never be the same again. Let their life never be the same again. Lord Jesus, this is a special request for me, to you, on behalf of all these ones. Lord, please just could you book an appointment just to pay them a visit and hang out with them. Please, you do that to me all the time. 
You have come to me and we hung out and I ask you questions. Lord, for, for them to know that I'm not telling lies, have an appointment. Go visit them, Lord. Because you are, you are just awesome. I want people to know how awesome you are. And I want them to know what they are missing. Pay them a visit, Lord. Touch them. Encourage them. Empower them. Renew their mind, Lord. Endow them with power. Endow them. You know, decorate them with, with decks, very beautiful ornaments. Shower your blessings. Open the windows of heaven and blow their mind. Provide for them what they have been asking. They have petitions and requests and needs, Lord. At the foot of your throne. Take a look at them. Endorse it and bring it to fruition. And hand it over to them. So that they know that you are truly who you say you are. A God of miracle. A God of signs and wonders. A God that brings hope where there is no hope. A God of healings. A God of encouragement. You know, a God that crowns our effort with victory. A God that has prepared graduations and to give us different, different uh, gifts. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, Heavenly Father, I also plead with you. Let your angels come to visit and reside with them and hang out with them and minister to them and help them and put their homes together and arrange their homes together. So at the end of the day, Lord, you alone will receive the, the glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each and every one of you that are watching. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we will continue to dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Cheers for listening. And then tune in some other time when I bring you whatever God wants me to bring to you. I don't make up these things. God wakes me up in the night and says, start writing and start writing. And I don't want to bore you too much quotation. If it's Bible studies, I can understand. But a word is enough for the wise. If you don't have a Bible, please get a Bible and start reading for yourself. Read. And before you open the Bible, you put the Bible up in the air and say, Lord, please bless your word. And teach me where to start and how to start. And for him to ask God to bring the Holy Spirit to order it and explain it to you. So that you understand it more. And the more you read the Bible, the more powerful you become. The more you understand God. The more you begin to say, ah, if I had known, God bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Peace I live with you, thus says the Lord. Peace I bring to you, not as the world brings to you. Let your heart not be dismayed. Do not be afraid. Because lo, I am with you, even till the end of time. In the name of Jesus I pray. See you again. Amen. Amen.